Uh, I'm sure this is a title that's probably going to piss off a lot of people, but, you know, that is my job at this point. Maybe a tiny bit clickbaity at the same time. But nonetheless, I'm going to be talking today, jumping on that hype. <clears throat> no, just getting in my two cents of basically what I think about this whole Battlefield 5 fiasco. I mean, I've <laughs> I've kind of just been sitting back for a while, letting it go a bit, and then seeing <laughs> how it ends up, and then finally making my own decision. I thought I'd put it in a video to piss off some more people, stir up the pot a bit more. Uh, sorry, I meant put another viewpoint out there just for people to make their own decisions on instead of just following other YouTubers because you don't listen to anything any YouTubers say we're just as dumb as the rest of you everyone is stupid when you listen to someone imagine they are stupid because they are just take everyone's stupid ideas and then make your own stupid idea. Then everyone's happy. Okay, fair enough, cool. Right, so if any of you don't know if you've been under a rock, EA and DICE have had a bit of a disaster when it comes to Battlefield 5, the game based in World War 2. The pre-order sales are a disaster. I think pre-order sales are 85% less than Black Ops 4. I think that was the statistic that was shown, although it is known that 96% of statistics are a lie. But why is it a big disaster? And this is the main talking point. Many people are going straight towards the SJW route. The Battlefield 5 is dies are shoving these new agendas down your throat having women on the front line having people with amputated limbs fighting on the front line and then there's the other side such as angry joe who's saying that it's nothing to do with that it's just to do with the bad release time it's to do with it being at the same time as red dead redemption 2 and black ops 4 which to be fair isn't a great release time i feel like that's never actually been a problem for ea and dies i mean look at infinity Inf infinite warfare and battlefield 1 i mean these two are pretty similar times and battlefield 1 completely wiped the floor with, you know, infinite war. Ugh, I keep... Fucking Thanos, Jesus Christ. So yeah, that could be a factor, but I feel like that isn't really coming into it at this point. I think personally, it's just people are fed up of having this game that they want it to stick in the era of World War II, and it's not really doing that. I mean, look at the first trailer. When I first saw this trailer for Battlefield 5, I was like, this this just looks so much like Call of Duty. It's not really Battlefield anymore, and I think that's the main problem. It's going very much towards the Call of Duty era. Now, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily, no, but Call of Duty's got that covered. Let them do their own thing. But why does this trailer make me think this is a new Call of Duty game, not a new Battlefield game. Let's look back to the days of Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. Even the Battlefield 1 trailer, I think, did an amazing job. You saw the reactions on that. That looked like Battlefield. You could see the destruction everywhere, the whole massive scale of it. And yeah, there's destruction, there's big scale in this one, but it looks so cinematic and so overdone. It doesn't look like you're just the boots on the ground of just another player in this massive war that is so much bigger than you. You look like you're the center of it. And that's never really what Battlefield's been about. It's more been about you're just another soldier. Call of Duty have got the cool action shots, the cool cinematic stuff. Yeah, Battlefield have dabbled in it a bit. There's a lot of crossover, but even at this point, I feel like Battlefield more is you're the soldier on the ground. You're just another one of these soldiers doing your part in the war, where Call of Duty is you are the center of the war. And I feel like those lines have been completely blurred. I mean, if you look at some of the characters, you've got a woman with a, a, an amputated arm, you've got a man that's got a tank top, that's not very World War II, it doesn't look very World War II, and yeah, it looks inauthentic, but Battlefield has never been historically accurate, let's be honest. I mean, the modern day Battlefield, you can get away with because it's modern day, but going back to, you know, 1943 and 1942, they're a different case. They were something very special. Holding my heart. I love you, 1943. I never really got to play 1942 probably, but 1943 and the Xbox 360 were some of the best days of my life. Go and watch my 1943 video. I put it out like three years ago, and that sounds so cute. Anyway, let's move on. Battlefield 1, of course, still wasn't historically accurate. There were still some insane things on it. It was an alternate version of World War 1, but that's what it came as, and people kind of accepted it. You had these suits of armor that did exist, but they weren't really used much throughout the war at all. And, you know, they kind of put it in just to make it better for the gameplay, but it wasn't really historically accurate. Coming on to Battlefield 5, I feel like they focused too much on going to the wacky and realistic. Having these things that aren't historically accurate, that at the end of the day, historical realism doesn't really matter for me in a game as long as it's a fun game, but there's a certain point where it gets to, this doesn't feel like a World War 2 game. Yeah, sure, go for that wacky stuff. Go for the historically inaccurate accurate stuff, all these weird and wonderful weapons and classes and character details and all that good stuff, but don't try and keep it in World War 2 maybe. Maybe take it out into its own thing because I think the problem is the historical fan base and the modern day weird wacky over the top intense fan base are completely clashing at this point which is causing this chaos. It's not just a problem of the game, uh, I feel like a big problem to this lack of pre-orders is of course the stubbornness of the fans but for a very good reason. Some executives from DICE or EA put out a statement that if you don't like this, tough luck, 
don't buy it. And it's one thing if a stupid, stubborn commentator like me replies with a snarky thing down below to your comments, but it's another thing if an executive at a massive multi-million dollar gaming corporation does the same thing. That's not exactly going to make their game sell very well, is it? I mean... Come on, guys, what do you mean? But I want to talk about this hate to Angry Joe a little bit. He's put out multiple videos, and the first one got a lot of dislikes. The next one's got, you know, less dislikes. Um, and you can see that I've liked it. And that's because he made a lot of valid points. Did I agree with every single one of his points? No, not necessarily. Did I think that some people in the comments were right with their opinions? That they don't like agendas being shoved down their throats. That there were some things that were just a bit too blue in the lines of games, such as Call of Duty, and going a bit too far on Dice's point of view? Yeah, I completely agree with that. I still like the video anyway because his points weren't redundant. I mean, the fact of release dates are completely a massive thing for all games. AAA games, yeah, it doesn't affect them quite as much, but when you're releasing to probably one of the most anticipated games ever with Red Dead Redemption 2 around the same time, you're going to have issues there. And let's be honest, we've had a Battlefield quite often every few years now, and, you know, Rockstar only pump out one of their masterpieces every, like, five or six. Jesus Christ, it's been five years. So everyone gets hyped for them, and I'm sure if someone's got, you know, 50 quid, they're going to spend it on Red Dead rather than Battlefield. That's just how it is. So pre-orders are going to be low anyway. Furthermore, remember, it's pre-orders. Pre-ordering is a bit stupid at this point. Yeah, you get some bonuses, but especially from a company like EA and DICE that have had very, very big controversies in the past. Star Wars Battlefront 2 being one of them. And even the Star Wars Battlefront 1, pre-ordering that gave you weapons that made you completely OP over other people. And it's given pre-ordering such a bad name. Now, I think I pre-ordered two games in my life. Funnily enough, they were this year, so I'm being a bit of a hypocrite here. But one of them was just... Just Cause 4, and that's because the Just Cause series is my favourite series ever to have graced this earth, and I'm pretty confident that, yeah, it's probably going to be similar to Just Cause 3 with some improvements, which is exactly what I want, so I was confident with that, and Insurgency Sandstorm, since it's a nice, small, sort of, I won't say indie at this point, but it's a nice company that I trust their games, and Insurgency was a brilliant game. I mean, it was only 20 quid, so what am I really losing at that point? But pre-ordering Battlefield 5, I'm good, thanks. Why would you pre-order a Battlefield game? Let, let's just be honest at this point. You're not really gaining anything, and 90% of the time, you're going to probably be disappointed in this stage <laughs> pre-ordering games. Just wait until it comes out, and maybe you'll find something you like, eh? So meanwhile, you've got things like Roblox and Club Penguin Island to keep you tidied over, so I don't know what is the hurry for playing. But now, on to my slightly clickbaity title. Is this going to kill the Battlefield franchise? Is it dead? Uh... <laughs> No. People are saying that, oh, Battlefield's gone downhill. Yeah, maybe it has. People are saying, oh, Battlefield is completely over. It's never going to be the same as it was again. It might not be the same as it was again, but why would you want it the same as I want it? Nostalgia glasses are a bad thing. Trust me, I went back and watched Ace Ventura When Nature Calls with Jim Carrey. One of my favourite films as a child. It's not funny at all. Nostalgia glasses, and it's ruined it for me. You know, I refuse to go back to things like Lord of the Rings, Conquest, and uh, the original Star Wars Battlefront on PS2. I refuse to go back to them because I know it will ruin it. <laughs> because I know they probably weren't as good as I thought they were back at the time. Battlefield will never be the same. And that's probably a good thing, depending on which way you look at it. it they like to improve. But it's not going to kill off the franchise. Call of Duty did the same with Infinite Warfare. Do you know how much hate that got? Do you know how bad the sales were? If they didn't put the Modern Warfare remastered in that, I would suspect it would be a very similar disaster to this point. Did it kill the franchise? Fuck no. Call of Duty is still just as strong as it's ever been, with Black Ops 4 being a complete success, and I know that people are going to love that game. I mean, COD's not really my thing. I'll pick it up every now and then and play a bit with friends like zombies, but I love Battlefield. I do. I genuinely love Battlefield. And am I disappointed at Battlefield 5? Pfft, not really, to be fair. I'm disappointed at DICE for how they've reacted to this and how they've dealt with the situation. And I'm kind of disappointed with, you know, the fans' response. Everyone thinks it's a complete disaster, and I'm now kind of just helping with that at the moment. I'm being a bit of a hypocrite, but, you know, that's a point of being a YouTuber at this point. But in conclusion, is Battlefield dead? No. It's got such a huge fan base behind it. I'm sure even if this game doesn't sell quite as well, which it doesn't look like it's going to, the next game they're going to have to buck their ideas up. A bit like Infinite Warfare, then moving on to Black Ops 4. Was Angry Joe wrong with his take on everything? No, he wasn't. He made some very valid points. But I think that people were so leaning towards their own agenda. I know it was ironic. You don't like your agendas being pushed down your throat, but then when someone else puts their point of view, no, they're completely wrong. Guys, everyone has a point of view. That's just how the world works. Yeah, you might not like it. 
but he had some valid points in there. But on the other side, do I think that a lot of the people are right saying that, you know, I don't like this being thrown by my throat, this is just feminists coming in and charging. Maybe not that extreme, but there's maybe a little bit of that in there as well. But I feel like this isn't a right wing and a left wing thing, I feel like this is just a, a gamer thing, you know? People, gamers are stubborn, we, we don't like what we don't know, and Battlefield are taking something into what we don't know, not very well at least. Maybe it could turn out pretty well. Who knows? And I guess we're going to have to wait and find out. Pre-orders aren't the end of everything, and I don't think it's going to be anything like that for Battlefield 5. I still think this game is going to be successful. I think it's going to be a fun game. It's probably not going to sell as well as Battlefield 1 by any stretch of the imaginations, but I know that DICE can pick themselves back up from it. Hopefully, no microtransactions. And maybe the Battle Royale mode might be a nice rip-up of PUBG that might be good fun to play. So thank you guys for watching. I know this is a weird ranty video. I have no plan for this. It's probably a disaster. Make sure you leave a dislike. Please don't dislike the I mean, you probably all disliked it anyway because saying anything about this topic gets instant dislikes. But if you found it, even a tiny bit of it, slightly entertaining or informative or interesting, Make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you leave a like on the video because that would be greatly appreciated. I'm just a kid here, just sitting behind my computer making stupid content on games and I thought that I would add my <laughs> thoughts into the mix. It's never a good idea. Thank you for watching and until then, I will see you in the next one.